Hey there, everybody. It's Ryan for Cataclysm Now. And I finally got Longstreet Attacks uh, to the table. And I'm currently doing the first scenario, which is a really small and actually relatively pared down, which is the Round Tops. It's uh, considered sort of the, the intro scenario. And I thought I would just do a bit of a, a learning video. Um, equal parts for your edification, but also for mine. I tend to synthesize information better if I'm forced to regurgitate it or present it in a way. So uh, if you learned something from this video, that's great. Um, feel free to comment or correct below. Um, this is my first blind sword system. Uh, so learning the system. Uh, when I first picked up the game a couple months ago, I was paging through the rules and it seemed honestly a little daunting. Um, maybe it's because of the text heavy rule book, but um, I finally started pushing some counters around last night and um, a lot of the concepts uh, just started to click. Um, I know there's a lot of nuance uh, that I'll be missing. Uh, we're not doing uh, CIC chits in um, the little round top scenario. Uh, there's no artillery on the board right now, so we'll skip that step. But I just want to go through uh, chip pulling and movement um, and the different steps through fire combat, etc. So, may not play a full turn, but we'll go ahead and um, pull a couple chits and see if we can learn the blind sword system. Okay, we're on the uh, 4.40 p.m. turn, um, the second turn of the, war, or the round tops scenario and we'll be doing the command decision phase so essentially both units um, get to choose events that they want to um, place in their cup so each player will secretly choose uh, one well the union chooses one the rebels choose two so for in this case um because of the the situation on the board um the union's going to want to do firefight so they can have an extra um, attack or extra um an extra fire and then the army of northern virginia and the Rebel Yell are pretty good as well. They can close distance and reroll cohesion tests. So from there, e then we flip over the remaining ones and kind of scramble them. And then we do the opposite. We discard two random Confederate ones and add this one, but we don't, you're not supposed to see it. And then for this one, we discard only two random ones. So they both have the same number of chits in there. They just um, don't know the exact composition. And obviously, um, the Confederates have a little bit of an advantage because uh, they're the ones um, attacking the position historically here. So we'll put all of these into a cup uh, along with the brigade activation and a fog of war chit. And then from there, we'll move on to... Uh, the chit draw phase. The first chit that was pulled was a fog of war chit and when that occurs um, you roll to see what result and then you follow the event. And it was a four which is wayward confederate uh, movement. Now for a wayward confederate movement the opposing side gets to essentially move another brigade uh, in any direction. Um, so to give uh, Vincent's brigade more breathing time, uh, we're going to go ahead and move the 4th Alabama um, south here. The second ship that was pulled was uh, a uh, Confederate firefight. And in this that permits any regiment, or really um, all 
regiments in one particular stack to participate in fire combat. Now, since there's nobody really in effective range, the uh, Confederates will hold this, which they're allowed to do, and we'll move on to the next chip. The next chip that was pulled um, is Hood's division. And when a division is pulled, they can activate um, any of the uh, constituent brigades here. Usually uh, you have to uh, roll against a command rating, but in this case, uh, for this scenario, they assume that all command activations are successful. So that's one of the nuances we won't catch here. So Hood will be activating Robertson's brigade and they will be taking the uh, regroup action, uh, which allows them to recover and to attempt to rebuild. So they can't move. So in this case, when you do that, we do the order step, which we did. We did uh, the next step would be fire combat, which not eligible, movement not eligible since we are doing a regroup, uh, close combat not eligible, now we do the rally step. The rally step will automatically take off um, the morale chip, and then we rally to see if uh, Robertson can uh, regroup some, or the 5th Texas to see if they can regroup some of their men. Okay, you roll 1d6 and you compare it to the cohesion rating. Um, you lose a cohesion if you are unsupported. That means if you're not in um, or adjacent to an enemy unit, or I'm sorry, a friendly unit, or if you are just in woods or rocky woods, uh, you're always considered to be unsupported. Uh, it's hard to maintain lines uh, in dense forest or dense trees. So we'll basically, we'll essentially need a uh, four or lower. And we got a one, so he is rebuilt. Robertson was able to recuperate, or the fifth Texas was able to recuperate. And that is Robertson's um, activation. Now up here, um, I have, we have their uh, brigade activation. So at this point I would flip Robertson over, and it's been activated for this turn. And then the Hood Division chip will go back into the cup uh, because Law has not been activated yet. The next chip was a uh, U.S. firefight, um, and they will withhold that um, as well. The next chip was a, a Union Confident. Uh, event which allows them actually let me consult on their player aid what that allows allows them to do. Okay, so you can hold this chip and play it after any close combat is resolved in your unit achieved any retreat result or sent a CSA unit to the broken track or eliminated it. So basically um, they can recoup morale. Uh, they can be played after any close combat, so it essentially allows them to attack twice uh, in close combat and remove potentially any morale uh, that they would have lost or cohesion they would have lost in that combat. The U.S. is on a roll. Their next one is Rebel Fatigue, which allows them to essentially impede the movement of brigade um, of a Confederate brigade that is moving. Next, we have Army of Northern Virginia Vets. Um, this command chit pool is a little shallow on divisions, uh, considering Vincent's uh, brigade. Or actually, the brigade is a part of Barnes's division, uh, and then the other um, division leader, Bernie, the only uh, units they had on the board were uh, from Ward's brigade, and, and they were knocked off. But the Confederates will hold the Army of Northern Virginia chit. The next one is Hood. And since Robertson's already been activated, they're going to activate Law. 
So Lost Brigade's been activated and they're gonna go ahead and do a maneuver, which gives um, all of their units in the brigade six movement points. They can't do anything else. They can't engage, cannot participate in fire combat uh, or close combat. They can't recover or rebuild, but they're gonna need that to uh, close the distance. So we had to factor in the train uh, costs here. Um, the train effects, um, when when actually playing it, actually, I, I realized it's a lot of it, it. It's a it's a it's a more granular game than I realized. I mean, each turn is twenty minutes, but the prices for these are steep. So, for example, moving into any rocky terrain is two movement points. Uh, same thing with like rocky wood. So to move here would be two points. To move here would be two points. Now to go up any single slope, you'll see these different train types, these single lines. That's just considered a, an upslope, but that's a, an additional one. So law would move two, be two, four, and then he have two more movement points. But he wouldn't be able to move in here because those would be three each, and then this would actually be four. So in a way. Uh, m movement can be pretty slow. Uh, obviously, there are road networks, um, but in terms of over this rough terrain, you know, it, it could take a bit for these men. Each strength point is about 50 men. So in this case, you know, you've got 500 men of the 15th Alabama that's moving through the dense forest. Um, so Rocky Woods is two. We'll do another two. This is going down slope into Rocky Woods. So that's four movement points. And then because this is on the same um, height or same elevation, that's another two. So we'll want to keep him supported. So we'll move the fourth Alabama. Actually, he can't be supported no matter what since he's in forest. So that doesn't matter as much. But terms of line of sight. Uh, before moving him, I'm going to calculate to see if uh, Vincent's brigade has line of sight. So based on my reading, if any, if the 20th Maine or the 83rd Pennsylvania fired um, into hex 3119, if the firing unit is at a higher level than the target unit, any intervening hex that is higher than both units will block. It's not higher because these are uh, elevation 9 and 8. Seven and six or lower. If all intervening hexes are lower than both units, which they are, any intervening woods or rocky woods or woodline terrain or unit causes an obscured line of sight. Um, that doesn't qualify here. That's going along the hex edge, and that doesn't work either. And then um, if any inter intervening hex is at the same level, it's blocked. If any intervening hex is at the same level, so it is not. Uh, obscured, so they're sort of out in the open. So, but they will go down to they'll move and support law. Now, lastly, we have or not law, the fourth Alabama. Now we have the forty seventh Alabama. They've got six, and they might as well two, four, six. So, law's brigade has fully moved. Okay, the uh, next jet pulled was Rebel Yell. Rebel Yell, uh, the, uh, the Confederates will play it immediately, and it essentially allows them to select one hex, and then they can essentially move out of um, turn to engage in uh, close combat. So we'll have a um, defensive fire and then a close combat here. Uh, so the 15th Alabama is going to go ahead and move into, um, it's going to engage with the 20th Maine here uh, at the top of Little Brown Top. So any combat, be it close or fire, um, is generally composed into two elements. Um, you've got this uh, 2d6 die roll. 
with two different colored dye to delineate uh, first and second place digits. And then depending on the strength points, it will inflict a, a cohesion check based on the um, cohesive, uh, cohesive ra rating of the um, unit that's receiving the attack. And then from there, we move on. Um, if the check warrants it, we move on to the cohesion test tables. So combat's a little more involved, uh, but that allows uh, a granularity and also allows um, a greater range of results, um, which you sort of need on um, a regimental 20-minute um, turn scale. So let's go ahead and calculate the... Um, so this is this is good. So we'll get fire combat, and we will get um, close combat in here. So the twentieth main uh, is armed with rifles, and uh, if you, you can check here, rifles effectively at range, so they're firing at one hundred percent. And we go through, uh, and it's eight combat, uh, eight total strength points. And then we go ahead and we will um, shift based on the uh, combat shifts here. So we're starting here on eight. Uh, good ground doesn't apply. Low artillery doesn't. Target in woods. Yep, woods. So that shifts it down two. So we're now down to uh, five. Uh, doesn't apply, doesn't apply. No, none of these apply. <clears throat> So we'll go ahead and actually roll on the five table here. It is a 14. And as you can see, a 14 on the five, no result. So now, conversely, Law or the 15th Alabama uh, gets to actually close in for close combat. So for here, um, because Rebel Yell modifies it a bit, uh, they are going to uh, they're going to get uh, their combat um, their CR rating their their cohesive rating I'm getting my acronyms mixed up their cohesive rating um, um, raised by one so really they've got five just to show you again. So the 20th main fired uh, at the 15th Alabama, inflicted nothing now. The 15th Alabama is closing. So they'll be using 10 strength points. And we're not doing fire combat, so we don't have to consult this. So we are starting on the 10 table. Um, there's no outnumbering. Uh, the defender is in Rocky Woods, so that's a shift of two down. Good ground, defender on higher side of slope. That is true, but it is on the steeper side, so it goes one, two, three. So you can see that the defensive modifiers um, are pretty strong in terms of occupying Rocky Woods and a steep slope. But Rebel, tell, uh, Rebel Yell will shift it two more back the other way. And then if you happen to have a flanking attack, um, I realize you can't see it. If you have a, a flanking attack, then um, uh, that's when another unit is able to pull in and, and, and help. Uh, you still have to designate a lead assault. Um, so for here, uh, like I said, we will be rolling, what was that, on the five? Yeah, we started 10, two, Here, you roll, and we got a 32. A 32 a 5 inflicts a result on the cohesion rating if it's uh, 0 through 2. Now, uh, the 20th main, as you can see, 
has a cohesion rating of four, but it's reduced down to one since they are in forest and they're unsupported. But because it basically the Confederates would have to roll a 41 or higher to inflict um, <clears throat> a cohesion check. So essentially nothing happens. So the 15th Alabama closed, uh, wither or survived the defensive fire from the 20th Maine, tried to close, but it was ineffective. So they are just uh, now engaged. The last chit pull is uh, Barnes's division. And so for here, uh, we will be activating Vincent's brigade. So for War Vincent's Brigade, they're going to go ahead and they're different. Basically, we're doing the brigade activation. It's an automatic success. But you could see with, um, you'd have to essentially roll a um, two or lower for the com uh, command activation if you were playing the, the full campaign game. So Barnes and Bernie would have difficulty moving. Now, if they fail it, they have a limited activation. They can still fire, but they can't move or do anything else. So for this, uh, we might as well go into attack. So they don't attack. They'll have four movement points. Um, I don't think I'm going to move the 44th New York or the 16th Michigan, but that will allow... Um, the 83rd to fire, and then it will allow uh, the 20th main uh, to fire as well. Now, going by the order of operations, we've issued the attack order for Vincent's Brigade. Now, we do fire combat, so all eligible fire combat. So, we'll do the 20th main versus the 15th first. Go ahead and roll that out. The Union roll was a 41 and they've got eight strength points, but it's shifted two down because of the target being in Rocky Woods. And on 41, we have a routine uh, cohesion check for fire combat. So we'll go down here, we'll take a look at routine. So essentially what we'll be rolling on this here And we got a 51. So the result is a depletion and then no, uh, the skedaddle result. So it's essentially, this is <clears throat> physical damage and this is morale damage. So, which is why they divide it out. So, and then depending on how badly you're hit, if your cohesion rating is lower, the um, tables will get more severe. The 83rd, Pennsylvania didn't have an effect. They rolled a 32. And because they are at uh, long range for their rifles, long range reduces their strength points by 50%. So we have, we have a, a three firing. So on the three table, a result of 32 um, will only produce a result if the cohesion rating for this, modified cohesion rating for this, was uh, a zero, but it, it's still a four. So we'll go ahead and we'll move on to um, the movement step. So, because technically the <clears throat> the, the way that it's ordered, you fire first, then move. And then we do close combat. So uh, the 83rd, if they're feeling salty, where they are not going to abandon their position. I don't want them to go down and then be checked and sent retreating. So they're not going to leave their defensive position. But Vincent is might as well um, counter or attack against the 15th Alabama. So we'll do the close combat again. Uh, we've done the procedure. Um, okay. So we've got eight strength points attacking five. So what we have to look for here, so we are going to be on the eight strength points here. 
and let's see what modifiers apply. Crater cohesive ratings on the enemy. Uh, that is true. So that goes up one. I may have forgotten that stuff in the previous combat, but that's why we're playing and learning here. Defender is in Rocky Woods, so that shifts two more down. Defender is on a higher slope. That is not true. No flanking attack. So we're rolling on the six to seven. <clears throat> and the um, modified cohesion rating of the 15th Alabama is a two because they are in the woods and you can never be supported in the woods. We got a 54 here. So 54 means for a two, we actually have a tough cohesion check. So here we are on the tough cohesion check. Uh, we consult uh, this table here and it becomes a 56 which is pretty tough. Um, so all units in the hex are depleted. In this case, since he, that, because he's on the, um, his broken side, because he's been already been depleted, uh, a further depletion, you have to roll to see if he breaks and you roll with their modified um, cohesion rating. So, See if they get it. They rolled a two and their cohesion rating is two, so they pass that. Um, so instead of taking the uh, morale hit or the, the material hit, uh, they are given, um, they're shaken. Now that was only one step of it. They still have to apply the six, which is the lead unit must make a break test, so they have to make another one. And if they survive that, then they have to retreat three. And then there's also panics. <laughs> so there's a lot going on here. Um, so we'll go ahead and do another break test. Now, because they're shaken, um, they are now a one for their cohesion rating. And so they got a two. So a two, um, if you are, you compare the result with their cohesion rating and the difference uh, determines um, how broken they are. And there's this broken box here. So the 15th Alabama uh, was broken. They are placed here on their depleted side. And as um, we get to the rally phase, those will shift on. Now, uh, the 20th Maine can choose to advance. Uh, but they will not, and so they'll stay put there. At this point, when the cup is all empty of chits, and it is, then we move on to the end phase. And then this uh, phase, um, just for the, the sake of keeping the video shorter, they won't play this out. But each side could then, uh, starting with the, uh, the U.S. forces, they can choose one of the... Uh, chits that they held back uh, to play. Um, and in this case, um, they would probably play firefight so they could get another shot and then probably vice versa. So uh, there would be more exchange of fire. So even when you move into the end phase, combat can still occur depending on the chit. And then from there, we do victory point awards. Um, and some of the scenarios, um, you tally the points every turn for holding different terrain. Uh, for this one, it's only calculated at the end. And um, I think I should have left someone on big round top. Anyway, we're, we're not playing the game to, 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 to win necessarily. We're just learning how to play. Uh, and then we flip over all of our activated uh, brigades to let us know that they're eligible next turn to be activated. And then we do the broken track assess our adjustment. So on this broken track earlier, everyone would move down uh, one. And then there's a, a coordination and reinforcement step, um, which doesn't apply in this scenario. And then we gather all the chits and then we start all over with the uh, command phase. So um, I hope that was illustrative in some way. Um, it was helpful for me at least to sort of walk through the, the different combat steps and the different layers. 
Um, it's certainly one of the most, probably the most complex system that I've actually taken on. I'm trying to think if there's anything this granular and tactical. Um, maybe it may not be the most complicated. I'm trying to think of any other title would rival that. Um, but in terms of its order of operations and how each uh, mechanism interacts with one another, uh, I especially like the combat results table, uh, how that's layered on top of a cohesion test. And then the cohesion test um, will determine not just material loss, but a, a morale loss as well. So. Um, it's, it's an incredibly well thought out system. I'm, I'm barely scratching their surface here. So if you're still around, well, as always, thanks for tuning in while I learn the blind sword system and, uh, we'll go ahead and catch you guys on the next one.